Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today, we are going to discuss about Chandrayaan 2. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains paper. So let's begin with the topics of discussion that we are going to look at. So these are the topics that we are going to discuss step by step starting with the news. Why is it in the news? So the orbiter of Chandrayaan has sent us some information which will be enabling the human generations to have a lot of information for future lunar as well as extraterrestrial exploration. That is what we are going to discuss. Let's talk about Chandrayaan first. So if we talk about Chandrayaan, it has its genesis in the first lunar mission of India that is Chandrayaan 1. And Chandrayaan 1 was announced in the year 2003 and then on 22nd of October 2008, it left the world from Satish Dhawan Space Center for exploring moon and then it sent information about the presence of water. There was one difficulty. It couldn't establish, Chandrayaan 1 couldn't establish that it was a hydroxyl radical or water itself because hydroxyl radical is OH and water is H2O. Now both these elements contains hydroxyl radical. So that wasn't clear. And then if we talk about the current uh, mission of India to moon, it has actually sent some very for the first time ever to us the information which was never known before. Moving on, let's talk about Chandrayaan 2. Now after Chandrayaan 1, its successor Chandrayaan 2, it was launched in the year 2019. What was so special about this mission? Because there were so many countries sending their missions to the moon and many big countries have done it before us. So the importance about this particular mission is a very big. If we talk about what has it achieved right now, we will discuss about that. But it was a technological leap because first of all, this mission was to go to the south pole of the moon which was undiscovered and secondly it was a technological leap in the sense because it consists of orbiter lander and rover as well so all these three things to be packed and having demonstration of soft landing and not hard landing hard landing means just crashing away and soft landing means putting the lander and the rover in such a manner that it is able to sustain its physical intactness as well as send information to the earth okay so however that did not happen we will talk about that as well so this was special that it was supposed to be landing on the south pole and it was a technological leap in the sense that it was sending orbiter rover and lander we will discuss about them as well so chandrayaan 2 and chandrayaan 2 how did everything come into place so 2008 it was conceived the idea that yes we will send Chandrayaan 2 to have a proper demonstration that yes water is there and not just hydroxyl radical and then the launch window occurred where mission planned landing to the moon was there on September 6, 2019 and then since then we were, are continuing our exploration. Now there was a small failure we will discuss about that as well. So the mission is an important step in India's plans for planetary exploration, a program known as Plan X, that is planetary science and exploration. How, how, how? Because moon is the closest body to the earth. Any experiment in the exosphere, if it gets successful, and because moon is a test bed, moon is a test bed for further explorations, it's very important that we are able to understand the temperature, terrain, the atmosphere, everything of the moon. And there are three components we have discussed about that and I will also show you. The mission payloads, they include terrain, mapping camera. Now that will generate a digital elevation model of the entire moon. So if we talk about the orbiter, the orbiter has actually planned or put through the 95% of the surface of the moon. It has already mapped it also. And the Chandrayaan 2 large area soft x-ray spectrometer this will test the elemental composition of the moon surface what is present there 
if we talk about water other than that what elements are present there also solar x-ray monitor now this will not only provide us this is actually a microwave classification it will not do only that for the moon but also the flares the solar flares of the sun okay so let's move forward and talk about how is it was launched gslv mark 3 so gslv mark 3 took chandrayaan 2 its destination and then we have the orbiter orbiter in the subsurface of the moon in order to have a connection with the moon as well as with the deep space network of india then we have of course the vikram lander which was of course which did not make it because it was destroyed in the process of soft landing it couldn't be soft landed and hence it was destroyed and of course pragyan pragyan i am going to write it here pragyan which was a six wheeled ai powered basically rover rover what does it do it actually maps the terrain what is the local atmosphere see orbiter is something this is the moon orbiter is moving itself around it around the orbit of the moon and then we have the south pole and the north pole the vikram lander and the pragyan rover okay so if these two did not get destroyed in the process of soft landing they would have done experiments on a more local level because orbiter is doing it on a global level it is connecting the surface of the moon to the earth okay it is sending the information from the moon to the earth but these two would have done much more experiments and this would have been a major step in the right direction when we talk about further explorations because of course orbiter is giving us something which is already almost already known except for few things which i am going to tell you today what has the chandrayaan 2 centers but these two would have done a major leap forward so that will be of course that will be demonstrated in the chandrayaan 3 mission we will talk about that also so moving on if we talk about this picture you can see chandrayaan 2 was supposed to do soft landing on the south pole here i am going to talk about the south pole see many spacecrafts many objects have landed on the moon and chandrayaan 2 was the 29th and the importance about this landing was that it's very important for the entire humanity to know what is unknown that means the dark side of the moon the moon the side which was never explored before and this is mostly frozen okay this is a frozen area and because of its importance because it is frozen its importance rises why because many important evidence are fossilized here fossilized in the sense because it is frozen the entire information about the internal solar system as well as the history of origin of the entire solar system is undisturbed here other than that there are so many craters that are unexplored and they might have water and that is why it was very important most of the spacecrafts were landing on the equatorial region of the moon because the temperature as well as the terrain is very hospitable in nature and also it is not the dark side if we talk about the equatorial region it is not the dark side of the moon so it was getting its energy from the sun but here it is frozen it is dark it is unexplored okay that is why it is very important the south pole region is extremely important moving on let's talk about the information that chandrayaan 2 has sent us first is if we talk about water molecule water molecule as i told you it was never distinguished but for the first time ever it has been distinguished by the orbiter of chandrayaan 2 that yes there is hydroxyl radical as well as water now this is undisputed also not only that this presence of water has been given by imaging infrared spectrometer not only that 
it has quantified the amount of water in a crater. Yes, it has also said that this much of water is present in this crater. Crater are like these deep pits on the moon. So it has said that this, suppose this is X crater, it has this amount of water. But it also has said, it also has generated this information that water is present at various latitudes of the moon, although the abundance differs. Suppose latitude Y has 50 ml of water, latitude X will have 45, like that only. So this is for the first time ever that has been done. Another du uh, dual frequency synthetic aperture radar, it has said that there is potential water ice or in the poles, the north and the south pole like that. So before that it was said that there is water only on the poles of the moon. But now it has been recorded that there is water ice on the poles and as well as water at different latitudes. So why is water so important? In the entire world is going to be a water scarce world in the future to come. That is why it is very important for this world to look into the next world for help. So we are looking towards the moon closest body. Also, minor elements are found by the help of class that is large area soft x-ray spectrometer. It has found the presence of minor elements such as chromium and manganese which is important for knowing the magnetic evolution of the moon. Why is moon attached or orbited towards sun, uh, towards the earth? We will of course have a future in, in this when we talk about the discovery of these two elements. Also sodium, there is presence of sodium as well. Now of course this is the first time ever that elements in elements have been mapped in the sense that we have found what elements are present on the moon. Also studying the sun, as I told you, solar x-ray monitor with the help of Chandrayaan 2, we will be able to know about why solar flares are happening and what is the source of heat in the corona. That is also important. So let's move forward and talk about the importance. Importance because it goes through the four processes. First is mineralogical, what minerals are present, what kind of elements are present which are scarce on earth, first that. Secondly, what is the history of the solar system? If we find similar kind of elements on earth and in every different planet or objects and celestial bodies, we will be able to have a linked history. Again, volatile mapping of the lunar surface in order to know how hospitable the terrain of moon is for sustainable future experimentation as NASA's Artemis mission is going to have a sustainable lunar exploration, wants to have a lunar sustainable exploration mission from the year, by the year 2028. Okay, again, surface and subsurface properties, what are the properties, what are the what is the basic nature of the moon will be helped with that. Also processes involved, how did, because we know the process of the atmospheric evolution of our earth, we know that, there are theories. What is the process involved in the evolution of moon's atmosphere? So that someday if we are looking at colonization of moon, we can of course move forward in the, the direction. Also, it's very important when we talk about the mapping of the terrain because it will be helping the future astronauts and cosmonauts and of course Vyomanauts to know about the importance of the land and how to drill the surfaces so that proper colonies could be set up for future generation, future astronauts because as I told you that moon is serving as a test bed for exploration, extra planetary exploration. Also, Japan Japan's Japan Aerospace Exploration, that is JAXA, this agency as well as ISRO, they are collaborating with, with this in the sense of lunar mission, lunar polar exploration mission, LUPEX, in the year 2023 20, 2024. So, of course, whatever information will be gathered by India with the help of Chandrayaan 2, it will help in 
sharing with the same inform of the same information with JAXA for another mission. Again, if we talk about another missions to moon, another missions to moon, this is important from the perspective of prelims, kindly look at it in detail. Capstone, NASA Lunar Navigation and Test Orbiter, supposedly 2021. Peregrine Mission 1, Luna 25, Omo Tenashi, Equilius. Okay, so you can take a screenshot. This is from NASA's website. So, in conclusion, if I want to ask you, of course, we all also know Shange's mission is from China. Okay, let's move forward. And if I talk about the importance of Moon, the importance of this information, I have to told you about the importance of Moon, the importance of this mission, any mission. Not only this mission, you must be thinking why are we spending so many billions and billions of dollars and rupees in order to reach another planet for no reason at all. There are reasons. First, if India becomes technologically very apt, it will be able to attract foreign investments, which will of course be given to the, in a very socialistic manner, reaching to everyone. Another thing, first is that, Another thing, in order to make our theory more, a theory is a theory until it's proven. So, in order to prove a theory, we need a lot of information. And why not take information from the closest body to the earth, that is the moon. Also, if we talk about, first I talked about technology, second I talked about the importance of proving a theory. Another one is encouraging skill development and also having skill and unskilled employment in the associated sectors as well. So there are so many reasons that India as a country needs to move forward in the field of science and technology. Let's look towards the main space question. Discuss the importance of recent findings of Chandrayaan 2 in 250 words. So that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching.